Hello, my name is Glenn Hall. Today is March 9th, 2021. Today's video is called Do Not Forsake the Episanugogi. This is going to be a very interesting uh, video, I think, for a lot of you. And I'm going to be dealing with a scripture that is almost universally misunderstood from uh, Hebrews chapter 10. If you have been watching my videos, you'll recall that I recently said that a lot of today's church prophets, I believe, are misinterpreting their prophecies. And I believe it's because they do not have a sense of the imminent return of our Lord. We are we are there. We are there in time and in history, the time of the second coming of Jesus Christ. I am hoping to produce several videos dealing with the Kodeshim. The Kodeshim are the holy ones of God, and they are very instrumental and important at this time in history. This video today is going to give you a good background for becoming ready to um, ready for the second coming. I'm going to read from uh, Hebrews chapter 10 to begin with. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 19. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great high priest over the house of God, that's Jesus, of course, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. The water is the word of God. We need to wash ourselves with the word daily. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Now, how many times have you heard people being hit over the head to get back into church by people using this scripture? Not neglecting to meet together. That word that was translated meet together is the Greek word episanugogi, E-P-I-S-U-N-A. G-O-G-E. That word appears in only one other place in Scripture. And I'm going to take you there now. That is 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And before I, I read that, I'm going to read beginning in chapter 1, because this is going to lay a foundation that I'm going to um, continue in in the next several videos. So let's start with 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5. This is evidence of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be considered worthy of the kingdom of God, for which you are also suffering. Since indeed God considers it just to repay with affliction those who afflict you and to grant relief to you who are afflicted as well as to us, when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, inflicting vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus, they will suffer the punishment of age-lasting destruction away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory 
of his might. This is the outer darkness that they're sent to. When he comes on that day to be glorified in his kodeshim, in his holy ones. The word that is used in our Bibles is saints. It's a word that has been destroyed by especially the Catholic Church. Let me read that again. They will suffer the punishment of age-lasting destruction away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might when he comes on that day to be glorified in his kodeshim. Jesus will be glorified in his kodeshim. I am going to be explaining what that means in future videos. And to be marveled at among all who have believed, because our testimony to you was believed. To this end, we always pray for you, that our God may make you worthy of his calling and may fulfill every resolve for good and every work of faith by his power, so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you, and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now to chapter 2, verse 1. Now concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered together to him, we ask you, brothers, not to be quickly shaken in mind or alarmed, either by a spirit or a spoken word, or a letter seeming to be from us to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. The day of the Lord still has not come, but it is at hand. Did you catch the phrase? Verse 1. Now concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered together to him. This phrase, being gathered together, is the phrase that they translated meeting together in Hebrews chapter 10. Do you see the context here? What is the context? The context is being gathered to Christ at his second coming. Because now as we go into chapter 2 of Thessalonians, it deals with the revealing of the man of lawlessness and things that happen at that time. And if you will uh, listen to my videos that I did concerning the mystery of the beast. I explain this in detail. I believe we've already seen the revelation of the man of lawlessness. But let's go back now to Hebrews chapter 10. And let's read that again. So Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23, 24, and 25. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. Well, that's what I'm doing today. I hope that my videos are stirring you up to love and good works, stirring you up to be in the word, to read the word, to apply the word, to live according to the word. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Now let me rephrase this. Not ne uh, and let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting the doctrine of our gathering together to Christ at his second coming, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Well, what is the day? The day is the second coming. So see, even the context here in Hebrews is dealing with the second coming. And so we are not to neglect the doctrine of our being gathered together to him. Well, who is it? Who is it that are going to be gathered together to Christ at the time of his coming? It's the Kodeshim, the holy ones, 
Those are the ones that are going to be gathered together to Christ at the time of his second coming. And it's not everyone. See, that's 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 the missing doctrine. That's the things that the thing that we have not heard. And that's also the place where the prophets of today they steer clear of this. And they don't make it a distinction between the Kodeshim and those who have refused to obey Christ, but yet still call themselves Christians. Well, in the coming weeks, I hope to produce several videos that will begin to make this doctrine clear about who the Kodeshim are, what it takes to be a Kodeshim. And my hope is that I will qualify for that someday. But at this point, I can't tell you that I'm going to qualify for that. It's like Paul, he didn't know if he had yet attained the crown of life. Those who are the Kodeshim who will be gathered together at Christ, with Christ at his coming are those who have, have achieved that crown of life. So now, as you read your Bible, apply this. This word, episanugogi, appears only two times in all of Scripture. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1, and here in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. And they both are dealing with the gathering together to Christ at his second coming. It's not relating to your normal church meeting. It has to do with understanding the times we live in and also with encouraging each other as we see the day of Christ approaching.